as we begin to discuss planting population, I want to get right into it now on soybeans. A lot of people are talking about, hey, I should decrease my soybean planting population. I don't need a lot of plants. You might not, but I would really encourage you do this on a few acres rather than on your whole farm. If you're going to try some lower populations or higher populations, it can change things. Weed control is the number one thing I think about. If we have a very low planting population with either corn or soybeans, you're going to find more weeds out there. So if you're having a problem already with weeds and you're going to a lower planting population, you're really going to need to step up your herbicide program. Here's the problem, Brian. We see so many growers look at, well, hey, this guy that got really high yields, here's what he did. I'm going to take one aspect from his recipe and do that. Well, in, in the case of corn, a lot of times it's, I'm going to boost my population to 40 or 45,000 like so-and-so did. On soybeans, it might be, well, I'm going to cut my population like this other farmer did. Hey, there's a whole system that goes into this, and that's why we're talking about it today. If you're going to cut planting population in soybeans, you've got to have an unbelievably good pre-emerge herbicide program because, as Brian mentioned, you will face more pressure. The other thing is, if you're doing that, do you want to have a bushy bean or do you want to have a thin line bean? Well, you might want to have a bean that has some decent branching to it if you're going to go at a low population like that. Yeah, so then you can end up with more crop canopy, basically. Now, if we're talking white mold, cutting planting population would only be a tiny part of it. We were just discussing white mold last week on the show, and we've had a big issue with this on our farm. We've tried planting populations down at around 100,000 plants per acre, still had all kinds of white mold. So that is not the total answer. Can it help a little bit? Yes. But what you do want to do, like with white mold, we might be be talking about hey maybe we need a thin line bean and try to let a whole bunch of more air through there but on the other side we're going to have more weed issues so there are always these trade-offs that we're talking about over the years we've actually found higher planting populations typically are better in soybeans you get more yield but you have to look at the economics now that beans cost as much as they do you can't really afford to put out 250,000 seeds per acre anymore and if you have a problem like white mold well you probably don't want a heavy plant population there anyway the other thing, if you're going to be planting a lower population, singulating that seed out is so important. If you can get the seed spaced perfectly and you're dropping one seed at a time instead of two or three, that, that ends up giving each plant a little better opportunity to, to really thrive. And if you walk soybean fields, just notice when you see three beans all hilled up together, count how many pods you're seeing on each of the plants, and then count it on the bean that got singulated and it has a little space on each side of it. It's a noticeable difference, so it's something you may want to watch if you're experimenting with planting populations on your soybeans. Whether we're talking corn or soybeans, we find more lodging issues when we have higher plant populations. So how do you fix lodging? in a high plant population, well, the number one thing you gotta look at is potassium. Unless you have properly built up the potassium in your soil, then I absolutely would not be increasing my planting population a bunch, especially in corn, but also in beans. What we're looking for with potassium is at least 4% base saturation K in your soil test. But, you know, if you're talking really heavy population, maybe you need 6% base saturation K, maybe it's 7%. All I know is you gotta have at least four, if you're down in that, one, two, maybe even 3% base saturation K, you're much more prone to lodging. You can also look at your copper levels and manganese. Those are the three big nutrients when it comes to lodging, potassium, copper, manganese. The other thing with both corn and soybeans, you can change row spacings as well. If you go to a narrower row spacing and space those plants out a little bit, it does change things versus in a very wide row at a low population. Now, when we're talking about corn and planting population, we use a rule of thumb. We'll talk about what your total yield is and divide that by how many thousand plants per acre you're seeding. So for example, say that you had 210 bushel yield and 30,000 plants per acre that you seeded of corn, well, that's seven bushels per thousand seeds you're putting in the ground. We'd say that's kind of an average number. If you're only getting five bushels per thousand seeds, we would suggest you're probably planting too high a population. On the other hand, if you're getting 10 bushels or more per thousand seeds, well, hey, you can start boosting your population a little bit more. Now, some of this is gonna depend on if you've got a flexier hybrid or one that's more determinant, but still, you can get more yield than just five bushels per thousand seeds. 
every farmer we talk to is in a different situation. I don't know what your conditions are on your farm, so I can't tell you exactly how we would feel about planting population on your farm, but what we would suggest is running some trials yourself. Run some trials on soybeans, run some trials on corn, do a few different things on your farm and just see what seems to pay for you over a period of time. As we've done that on our farm, we're finding on our good ground around 30,000 plants per acre, maybe 32,000 in corn it is doing just fine. And until we get up near 300 bushel corn average, we don't feel a big need to increase that. On soybeans, 140,000 plants per acre is now what we're down to, maybe even 130 in some cases. Yes, you can cut a little bit if you're going for white mold reduction, but you could also increase a little bit too in certain situations if you want better weed control. Selecting the right population for your corn or soybean crop could be a way to help you fight off our Weed of the Week. It's a pretty invasive weed. Can you identify it?